talk about a Power Apps example. So today we're gonna to do a volunteer management app, right? Last weekend, my wife was running the PTO and I had this volunteer event and all these sign-ins and all that. And they were doing it on paper and I was like, oh, that'd make a good app. So I built the app. So I'm gonna walk you through the app, how it all works. And one of the fun things I added to the app was a pin input so you can sign in, sign out. We're gonna do some display modes and that type of stuff. But just a bunch of little lessons to kind of show you this working app. We're gonna put it all in a solution so that way any of my training students can download it. Is that any fun? Then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so here's the app, right? Real quick, we can kind of fill this out. So we'll set my name. My duty was definitely manual labor. Oh, I did a lot of that. And then over here we get to sign, right? So rah, 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 rah. Now, once again, if you want a tablet or a phone, you can just use your finger to sign, but you can also use the mouse to sign. And once we've signed, we can just say sign in. We get the little please wait with a thank you. Isn't that beautiful? And behind the scenes, this is saving all the data into one Dataverse table. So I have an image column where we're gonna store the signature. We're gonna set the full name, the duty, their sign in time and all of that. All right, and just like that, it is done. And so, right, it resets everything so the next person can sign in. If you think about it, like everyone signs in at once. So we're just kind of handing it off back and forth. Now, if you go over here to view all, here you can see all the people that are currently signed in. The ones that are with checks, they have already signed out, right? So you can see I spent two minutes volunteering. Um, you know, Buddy spent 98 minutes. And so, but if we go here to me who just signed in, so now if I want to sign out, it's calculating the volunteer time based on when they signed in versus when they signed out. And so it's currently at one minute. And so we got to capture that when we actually sign out. But we were good, so we're gonna sign out. So we'll just kind of draw a little smiley face here instead of my signature. There you go, and we'll say sign out. We do the same little thank you pop up. Boom, the check mark is over here so you can see that Shane signed in here and signed out there. Good stuff, right? So let's talk about how we built this. So we kind of jump back into studio. Not a lot going on here. Now visually I did make it kind of pretty. Um, so what I did here was this is a bunch of stuff I did in Canva. So I went in Canva, I found this whole volunteer thing and I used the Canva AI tools to expand out the image, change the background. And so that, that was how I built those assets in Canva. The same, like if you notice like the, the buttons here, so like the sign in button is just a rectangle. So the sign in image and the view all image, those are both just pieces of my design from Canva. And so we throw a rectangle over those to do that. So I don't know, I've been thinking about doing a video. It was like just a walkthrough in in Canva, like some of those more intermediate steps, a beginner and intermediate stuff so you guys could build better images over there because I use those a lot for my power apps. But I don't know, leave me a comment if you think those would be, that'd be a good idea for a video. Would you watch one that I just taught Canva basically the whole time? I don't know. Anyway, so let's talk about that rectangle. Let's go back here. Okay, so the way that these rectangles work when I want to put them over, because what I want, if you notice, like when I hover, see how it grays, I get away, it goes. If I press, I'm holding down my mouse right now, it is also clear. And when I let go, it would then go back to the gray. So the way that that works is you take a rectangle, you kind of stretch it over the size, so you can kind of see I've made it the size. You're first going to set the fill of the rectangle, right? So when you want its normal fill to be transparent because you don't want it to show up at all when they're not hovering, right? But then your rectangles, they have a thing called hover fill. And so for this, I'm using gray, and then that 0.25 there at the end, that says make it a real light gray, right? If I wanna make it a darker gray when you hover, right? We just change this to like 0.75. Now if we hit play, when you hover, see how gray it is? It doesn't look as good, right? So you gotta kind of find the right balance there. So set that back to 0.25. Okay, so that's how you do that, right? Then there's also for the rectangle, there is a pressed fill. And so that's where it uses the selfie and it goes back to transparent. So while they're holding down with the mouse, it is transparent. So that's how you give that visual effect right there, clicking it, even though it's not really a button, it looks like a button they're clicking on, okay? So that is how that works. Then all we're doing here on select is we are saying, hey, update context, right? So that is create a variable of var weight, set it to true. That variable turning to true is what makes the pop-up show up, right? I'll show you the pop-up in a second, but setting the variable true. So when we start, that makes that little thank you message come on. So then it patches volunteers tracking. So that is my table, defaults volunteers tracking. So create a new record, set the full name to whatever they typed in, the duty where they typed in, the sign in date and time is to now. And then the sign out signature is the pin input one image. So your pin inputs, they output a image property. And so by referencing it here with the patch, it will just take that image and save it into my Dataverse uh, image column. Then I reset the controls. So I manually reset all three of those so that way the next person could sign in without deleting the other person's info. And then finally, when all that's done, we take the variable and set it to false, which makes the pop-up go away, okay? 
So that's what that looks like there. Now, if you wanted to see the Dataverse table, let's look at that. Or now, before we look at that, so if you notice over here now, this is starting to come out, right? This whole copilot. So this is new here. And so one of the things you can do with this one is say, explain this formula. So if we say explain this formula, it's going to read through that. And it's going to figure out what's going on there, right? So say, hey, you're setting the uh, variable to true. You're patching a new record with a value from the controls and the date. Interesting. Resets the inputs and then finally sets the variable back to false. So this is a great tool to help you guys start to understand formulas, especially when you're new at this, right? You put stuff in there you don't know what it does all the time. The little uh, copilot explains it. So we have a video that walks through all those a little bit long, later. A little bit later. Um, there's a couple of features I'm still kind of waiting to come out before we do the whole video on that. So anyway, a little preview there. All right, so anyway, back to data sources. So if we go over here to data, and so here we can see that we've got volunteer trackings. And if we say edit data, you can see my columns and my uh, my data, right? Now, I did this one in Dataverse. Uh, the whole reason I did that was so I could package it on a solution. And like I said, if you're a subscriber over at training.powerapps91.com to the YouTube library or any of the classes, you can download this uh, working app. But so packaging up in Dataverse is a lot easier. You could definitely just do this same thing in SharePoint or Excel or wherever you want to do it. I've never built it in Excel, but you could. SharePoint, SQL, somewhere like that. But uh, I use Dataverse because it's more portable for me. Okay, and those are the only fields that I was really using here. So close out of that. Okay, so that gets us um, understanding the sign in button. Now, another piece of this here is the pop up. So what I did for that was I created a container. And so right, so if you go to insert and under layout, I didn't use the horizontal or vertical because they define where things go. I use the generic container. It's a great way to group things that you want and kind of control them all at once, right? Because by setting the container, if you look at its visible property here, it is tied to that variable. So when that variable became true, the container shows up. When that variable becomes false, the container goes away. And that's what caused that to show up. The easiest thing you do here, I can we just comment this out real quick. We're going to set this to true. And now you can see that the container, right? What is it? So the container itself is what's setting the gray. So the container itself has a fill of uh, 169.169.75. So I use that darker gray here for the modal. Um, and then the image control, uh, all that is is that is a uh, a GIF or a GIF or however you prefer to say it. Like I, I like Peter Pan peanut butter, so I don't get caught up on saying GIF, but whatever. Um, but so that is just an animated GIF that does that image, right? So if you didn't know, Power Apps just lets you put those in there. So I went to Canva and I grabbed their little thank you thing. And I added the words, please wait underneath it. And so I just made this into an image in Canva, exported it as a, uh, a GIF and uploaded it. Bingo, bango, I've got this pretty little sign on screen, okay? So that's all that goes into that, right? So let's go back to our container, let's set it back to false, or not to false, but back to the variable, which is currently set to false. This one's pretty easy. The next screen's got a little bit more complexity to it. So here, if we look at the view all uh, real quick, right? So there was a rectangle there and on select, all that one does is navigates to view all screen, right? So if I hold down alt, I can press that button, boop. And so that brings us to our second and final screen. Woohoo! So like I said, this one's got a little bit more going on. Um, you know, make sure you hit like on the video real quick. But while we're looking at this, so here the gallery is just simply that. It is a gallery sorting the volunteer tracking or table. Uh, I sorted it by um, total time. That is not what I meant. Oh, you know what I did? I wanted to sort it by total time and ascending because the uh, the ones that haven't checked out yet, their total time is zero, right? Everyone who's checked out has a minute, two minutes, hours, however long they volunteered for. And so that way, the people that are not signed out, in this case, just Nicola right now, they'll always be at the top. Now, what I probably could have done or probably should have done, I don't know, I might have went back to my data source and just added a column for status. So I could have had a column of, you know, uh, signed in or signed out. I don't know, maybe I would have done that, but this worked just as fine. I was trying to kind of do this as small and lightweight as possible. And I wasn't going to use it for that column for anything other than sorting. So I just decided to sort off total time. Up to you. Okay. So that's all that's going on in the gallery. There is literally everything else is just show some different fields. Um, and then this is, of course, the sign in SIG. I don't know why. I think the reason I've decided to put the signatures in here is because you're going to see that the logic's a little weird with signatures in a second. And so I thought this was a fun way because, you know, that whole, if uh, you believe in the nudge principle, right? if they signed in and signed out, like they will feel like to be more honest than just signing in or signing out your friend because you're not forging their signature. So now for these fields over here, uh, so here, let's hit play and let's choose Nicola's record. 
right? So she's been signed in for 4,243 minutes. Woo. So notice they're all great. So here what I did, all of these text inputs, if you look, I set their display mode to disabled so it would come in that grayed out fashion because I want them to be able to see it but not be able to edit it and I feel like grayed out stuff is a good indicator that, hey, you can't edit this. I could have also changed this to uh, view, right? If we change this display mode to view, then, you know, it, it looks it looks clicky still, right? Um, and then maybe, you know, you kind of, I don't know, there's different things you might do there, but I really just felt the best. I felt I got the best design by setting them all to disabled. I did have to manually set the border color here to that per, uh, purple. Notice it's NF primary because I used name formulas, right? If we're an app, and not on start like I used to. Right now I do formulas and I said NF primary equals color value and that is that purple. If you haven't learned about name formulas, there's a link to video up there that you can check out on those. But um, you know that's the better way to use if you're setting a variable that you want to be static the whole run, great. But now at the same time, if I decide instead of them being um, that, like maybe I want them all to be yellow, right? So I can just go here and say color.yellow and then uh, semicolon and then slash that out. And now everywhere that I was using that purple, you can see is yellow. Remember, that's another one of my tricks is anytime I'm trying to find a color, I set it to something obnoxious, right? By setting it to obnoxious, you now easily see everywhere I used it because there's this ugly yellow on the screen. So don't ever use color.black because then it would kind of all blend in. Use some ob color and it shows up, right? All right, so let's put that back though. We don't really want the ugly yellow. I did so much work to make this app pretty. So there's those. So these all kind of work as you'd expect, right? This is uh, the selected name. This is a selected duty. This is the selected sign in time. Down here at the bottom, I did something a little different though, right? So here I needed to use, right? Like if they've never signed out before, then what I wanted to do was I wanted to take their sign in time and subtract now. Okay, so that was how we calculate. So that's where the Nicole's is coming for. But if we click on right, because this total var record total time is blank. But if we click on this one, boop, right, this one var total time is one minute. So I needed this to show different things, right? I wanted to show a calculation if they've never signed out. But if they have signed out and we've set a total time, then I need to show that. So that was a mistake I made in the first build. So, you know, coalesce the great formula or formula function for that because coalesce shows the first non-blank value. So if total time is blank, it just immediately jumps this date diff. If total time's here, it works, right? So it's keeping you from writing those big if statements that say, hey, if this, then do this thing. If not, do this one, where, you know, we were just trying to kind of look up a value like that. So that's all pretty straightforward. The only tricky one in the puzzle here is the uh, pin input. So with pin inputs, there's they're a little weird to work with because there's no, like, on change event. There's no on sign event. There's no... Um, you know, they're not, they're not blank when they're unsigned. So a lot of that causes us problems. So we need to work with the pin input. What we need to be able to do is we need to find out, we can't check to see if it's blank, even though it is blank right now. Like, like if we just did this, right? If we said insert a label, pull this down here. And so like if I do pin input one underscore two, yeah, I should have renamed that image. Look, it's not blank. I mean, it is because there's nothing in there, but it is still got a value there. So you can't check to see if that is blank. So what we do is when we load the pin input after it's loaded, we set a variable to be the value of that, right? That hot garbage, which changes every time. So then that way we can see, hey, is the pin input and that variable still the same? If they're the same, we know it's still blank. Because as soon as we change this, right? As soon as I draw a circle here, oh, I gotta go to a person that's not, whatever. Right? As soon as I draw something here, watch, that changed. And so notice then my sign out button did. So that's how we're checking on change. So if you go look at my sign out button, um, what you're going to see here is do, 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 display mode. We say, hey, if var sig equals pin input to image. So this is saying, so how did var sig get set? Well, I don't remember. So what we're going to do is we'll just copy that. We'll use our little search function over here. We will search for var sig. So we can see that, look, here on select, there we go. So on select in the gallery, we are setting var sig to the pin inputs image. So that's how we know, uh, or that's how we set it to blank. So every time they click on a person in the gallery, it sets the variable. When it sets the variable, right, to the blank value, then when it changes, that's when the sign up button shows up. 
So that is a little bit awkward, right? Getting that out of there is awkward. But that is how we're able to do it. We also say is blank var record because we want this disabled if they haven't selected anything yet, right? They got to select someone before they can sign someone out. So those are the two ways we do that, setting the display mode of the uh, the button there. So then let's look at what the on select for that one does. So if we go to on select, so here, same type of logic as before. So we're going to update the, the variable. So that's going to make that loading screen show up. We're going to patch the selected record, the var record from the gallery with the sign out time of now, the sign out signature of this, and then total time of whatever's in the, uh, the, the input, right? So that's how we're going to capture that information. We're then going to set var record to blank. So we're going to blank all that out so that I'll disable everything again. So I have to select another person to sign them out. We're going to reset pin input one underscore two. So that'll put that back to a blank image. We're going to update our variable again. So we're going to set var sig to that variable. So that way we capture var sig as the blank value again, because the blank value is different than the blank value was a second ago because it's went through, right? I told you the pin input's a little a little weird. You just have to understand that even though it's blank, even though you set it back to blank, it's always going to be a different one of those blobs. So just do as I show here. And then uh, finally, when all that's done, set the variable, which then makes the loading screen go away. Okay. So that is how that piece works. And remember, if you go over to training.powerapps91.com, sign up for the YouTube library or any of my awesome classes, you could download this app and then you'd have all this working code. Last little piece here. So like if we go out of here and back to view all, so when we land back over here, notice like everything's grayed out. We can't use the pin input right now. And so that's because once again, with the pin input, we also set the display mode. We said, Hey, if is blank sign out SIG, right? So if the uh, SIG, they haven't set a sign out SIG, so they've never signed out before and the record is blank, then make display mode edit if not disabled, right? So that's why, if we choose Nicola, this lights up, we can color in it. If we choose Shane's record, it does this. We didn't reset it. We should probably add some logic. Uh, the, right, so my logic locks it, but it doesn't reset it. Meh, that's all right. But you get the idea, right? So how do we fix that? Let's go look real quick. I want that fixed. So on select, we did that and that. Uh, so then the other thing that we'd want to do here is we'd also then want to make sure that we're doing our reset of our uh, pin input one underscore two and oh and then that sets the image okay that should work right so let's try this again so now if we click here there you go now it's reset now it's reset now it's not um and there you go we're off and running nope well we're just, we're just kidding boom so there you go so there is a fun little example app of you know doing volunteer management it's not the hardest, most complicated thing, but these scenarios often aren't why people like to start with these type of apps because they're good core skills. You're really just working with some conditional logic around when to show buttons, when not to, carrying around some variables to you know, get some practice there. But at the end of the day, it's not a huge multi-screen app. So these are great apps to kind of fundamentally get you going. Questions, comments, leave them below. Always after those. Other ideas for example apps like this you'd like to see. I'd like to hear about those as well. Right, because Power Apps examples are a way that we all learn. They just give you ideas, you know, and this whole volunteer management is just another one of those. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.